What's up everyone, Chaps here, and today we'll be concluding this Horde Basics Guide. In part 1 we discussed everything you need to know about the lobby, and in part 2 we discussed the UI and earning energy. So today we're going to be covering spending energy and some additional mechanics. So you're in the match, and now you have some energy. How do you spend it, and what do you spend it on? Let's start with the perks, which are new to Gears 5. From the last video, you remember these things in the bottom right-ish of your UI? Mid-match, pressing Y is going to activate your ultimate ability, but between waves, pressing Y will bring up the perks menu. Each character has four perks to choose from. These can be leveled from 1 to 10, with each increasing in price. In order to upgrade one, hit Y to bring up the menu and press the D-pad in the direction of the item that you want to upgrade. Some of these are pretty nice, but others I wouldn't really bother with. I should also mention that these reset each match. Your progress towards these do not save and are intended to be re-leveled with each match. Again, we'll be sure to go into more specifics on the hero-centric videos. If you're an engineer, you may notice that you don't actually have a perk tree. Because Gears 5 is set up for everyone to spend their own energy, not as a shared pot, they don't want to burden the engineer with perks. The engineer will need to build fortifications, so it wouldn't be fair to force them to buy perks and fortifications. Speaking of fortifications, let's take a look at the fabricator. When entering the fabricator, you see a screen similar to this. At the bottom, you'll see the option to deposit energy. This isn't necessary, but it's a nice way to transfer some energy from the fabricator so that other players have access to it. You have a tab for weapons, and a tab for fortifications. The weapons tab is very limited in what it has available. Each character has a different set at their disposal, and there doesn't really seem to be a way to add to that list. Fortifications deserve an entire video to themselves. I think we actually had three videos about them alone in Gears 4. But I'm going to wait to gather more details before discussing those. To give some basics though, fences prevent enemy movement and do a little bit of damage. Decoys generate aggro and attract enemies towards them. MG sentries or machine gun sentries, or I call them kinetic sentries, they shoot bullets. They have a very high rate of fire and are used in medium to short range and have a very wide viewing angle. Shock sentries have a much lower rate of fire and have a fairly narrow viewing angle. That said, their shots pack a much larger punch and can stun enemies, and can even headshot them. Another aspect that helps make up for the narrow field of view is their range. These things can attack targets that are much further out. Weapon lockers are just like Gears 4. You store your weapons in them, and they regenerate ammo. I'll say they do seem a lot slower than Gears 4 though. You'll also notice the lack of man turrets now. I'm guessing that the game became too one-dimensional or boring in Gears 4, so TC opted to remove them. The next fortification is the Forge, which is new to Gears 5. As I mentioned in the previous video, this thing is actually a source of power. By depositing weapons into the Forge, you smelt them and gain energy. In general, the more powerful the weapon, the more energy it gives. It might seem expensive at first and like it's not giving much, but once you upgrade it, this thing actually has a really good return on investment. The Engineer class is able to build any fortification, and even get some discounts. Other classes can only build particular fortifications, as you can see by the table here. Not only this, but Engineers are the only ones who can upgrade fortifications. Unlike Gears 4, the Fabricator no longer has a level system. Instead, each fortification is upgraded independently. Everything you purchase is level 1. If you want to upgrade it, you choose to do that while carrying the fortification. In general, upgrading will make them have more health, more damage, and or give more power. So let's look at how fortifications work when playing. Something new is fortification rotation. I was ecstatic when I saw this, as I had asked for this since early on in Gears 4. By holding the left or right trigger, you're able to rotate the fortification. This allows you to set stuff up in previously hard to reach places. Above each fortification is a red health bar and above each sentry is also a blue ammo bar. Obviously, letting the blue bar drain will mean they're out of ammo, and letting the red bar drain will cause them to be destroyed. In order to keep these bars filled, you need to repair fortifications. This can be done via the repair tool that the engineer spawns with, or you can buy it from the fabricator, or through Jack's left trigger ability. Repairing costs energy, which will drain from your personal budget. If you run out of energy, it will start to drain from the fabricator's budget. Note that energy in the fabricator can only be used for repairing fortifications or purchases from the fabricator. It cannot be used for perks and stuff like that. 
If you're unable to keep these fortifications healed, you'll find yourself with some destroyed fortifications. These appear as glowing yellow holograms. By using the repair tool or jacks tool to repair them, or by pressing X, you will make them respawn. This is cheaper than buying a new one, and it's going to spawn with one quarter health. Just to be clear, I'm going to say it is much cheaper to keep them alive from just repairing it, but I guess you're paying a little bit extra if you let it die and then have to go rebuild it after the round. If you let these sit until the next wave starts, they disappear, so if you want to rebuild it, make sure you do that before the next round starts. A new mechanic that seems pretty little known is the price increase of fortifications. As you buy more, the price of fortifications increase. For every 5 fortifications you buy, the price will increase by 1000 energy. This is on a per player basis though, so if you're building a lot, it might eventually be good for the non-engineer to buy stuff, and you can rotate off who's buying things. That really gives you the basics of fortifications, but there's plenty more to learn, so be on the lookout in the coming months for a new video on that. In the meantime, let's take a look at some other aspects of the game. First up, revive mechanics. Just as in Gears 4, when a player is killed, their cog tags are dropped on the ground. If another player picks up these tags and brings them to the fabricator, the dead player is allowed to respawn. Unlike Gears 4, this is now free, but it's not an instant revive anymore. The first one will take 5 seconds, and each subsequent revive will take an additional 5 seconds. As long as you're willing to wait for the time penalty, you can do this as much as you'd like. Up next, let's talk about the wave sets. This goes back to a similar style as to what was seen in Gears 3. Every 10 waves has a theme. It isn't as defined as it was in Gears 3, which is kind of unfortunate in my opinion, but helps make things a bit less repetitive. You may have a set that is DB heavy, or you might have one that is leech and reject heavy, and so on. Not only do these sets reflect the way that you set up your base, but they also indicate what type of boss might show up. Speaking of bosses, we still have a boss every 10 waves. We also now have more defined mini boss waves on every wave that ends in 5, well except for wave 5. These enemies will have a much more defined health bar, and are usually much tougher to kill. Be careful about killing them right away though. If you kill bosses or mini bosses too soon, a second one, or even a third, might spawn. These take up a larger percentage of the enemy's remaining queue, so as long as you kill a decent number of adds first, you should be safe to kill it and not get another boss. New to Gears 5, we have something special after each boss wave. On wave 11, your first power tap will appear. These are preset locations across the map, and the power tap will randomly appear at one of them. On waves 21, 31, and 41, additional taps will appear. These two are random, but they will always appear at a location adjacent to a previously spawned tap. That's good and all, but what do they do? Well, you capture these sort of like a ring in King of the Hill, except they take a really long time. Once claimed, they become a fortification and get a health bar. If destroyed, you don't get a quick rebuild option, you need to stand there and reclaim it again. These taps are completely optional and are intended to incentivize teams to spread out or try defending new locations on the map. As I mentioned in the previous video, taps are a great source of energy for your team. If the tap is alive at the end of the round, you're able to hold X at it to extract some power. Not only that, but keeping it alive for multiple rounds will cause it to give more power. This maxes out at 4 rounds, after which it's operating as efficiently as possible and will keep giving you your max reward as long as you keep it alive and keep extracting from it. If it's destroyed, just reclaim it and it starts back at level 1. By the end of the match, you have a potential of 4 taps on the map, and you can claim all of them between rounds and get a ton of power. Alrighty then. By now you should have a pretty solid understanding of how Horde works. As usual, the best way to learn is practice. As you play, you will start to identify a ton of places for variation and optimization. That's something that we'll be spending a ton of time evaluating, and you will hopefully see some pretty nice videos from us in the future to cover these topics. If you have any questions about anything covered here, or hell, even stuff not covered here, then please be sure to comment below or hit me up on Twitter. Also, if you believe you found some awesome strat or combo, let us know. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on our future videos, and make sure you hit that like button. Thanks for watching everyone, and I will catch you next time. Damn it! The tap's destroyed! Let's re-secure it!